Okay, welcome level one people. This is gonna be a demo of the rhythms. In the next lesson, I will do level two demos for the rest of you. So when I start doing these, I, I know I always start with the head or usually start with the head, but before I even draw the head, I always wanna spend a few seconds looking and observing. I wanna capture in my mind the most important elements and just plan ahead. Okay, so in this one, the head was the most important and it was that very basic guitar pick shape, that very simple curve to the neck. And then notice how I'm starting that connection to the torso. At the top there, I kind of indicated the back shoulder and then an angle for the back and then that rhythm down S-curve to the waist. So I broke it down into three lines and I know most of you would probably have just done that with one simple S curve and that is fine. I noticed as I was doing these or after I was done with them that I just couldn't help but to throw in some other stuff that I know that I haven't introduced you, to you guys yet and I just couldn't help myself. I wasn't even noticing that I was adding that. So that back shoulder is just, it's, it's perspective. Like I was just trying to add some structure to that, to add depth. So if you notice me doing something that you don't understand yet that looks kind of boxy, that's probably what it is. I'm naturally adding some structure to these and I'm not even noticing that I'm doing it. So I finished the torso and notice I am exaggerating that a little bit. I'm pushing that hip forward to the right uh, a little bit more than what I'm seeing and that's normal. I typically want to exaggerate the gesture of the pose just a little bit. It's good practice to try to push the things that you think are the most important. And the amount, the degree to which you push these things, of course that it's up to you. You know, you could try to be a super accurate and try to make it kind of pure to what you're seeing, or you could try to push it as far as you can. But I usually just push it a little bit the legs were quite simple in this one. They're just those basic S curves that I showed you for the side view template of a leg. And both feet are very much just those triangles because it's pure side view for both feet. The arms, you know, this front arm was quite unique as one that I already showed you actually in the example. Um, but yeah, it's it's got these two C curves at the bottom. It's not an S curve or a C curve. It's, it's a combination of two C curves. And then in this one, I did put that kind of that corner in the middle on the top line to kind of push it as if that arm is more locked. It kind of gives that impression of that bend the opposite direction. Now that's something that I didn't want to exaggerate too much because if you bend it the opposite direction too much, then you're kind of breaking the elbow. So there is a limit there. And with the hands, I tried to figure out, you know, what's the most basic, what's the, you know, what are the fewest lines I could put down to kind of show this, the pose of the, the gesture, <laughs> literally what the hands are gesturing. What is the story they're telling? And how, can I do that in three or four lines? These, I, I don't know if they're very successful. I think they're kind of messy. I wish I had designed them a little more simply but yeah in here again i'm kind of emphasizing a few landmarks to kind of push the gesture with a few muscles but that's it okay this next pose is kind of similar it's a it's a side view but more action he's much more active in all the angles that we're seeing here and notice how quick of an indication i put in for the head i mean it's barely visible and so i just put the back the top the front and moving on to the shoulder and with the shoulder, the main thing I wanted to get is just the placement in relationship to the head. So you see I just, at the top there, I just put a little dash of the angle and then quickly just figuring out the curvature of the back and then the S curve from the shoulder to the leg, you know, to the knee and then all the way down to the foot. Notice how quickly I've reached the foot. We're only like, I don't know, 30 or 40 seconds into this and I'm already down to the toes. And that is, I don't want to say it's like extremely important, but if you can get that, if you can figure out the curve from the head to the neck to the 
torso to the legs and all the way down to that one of the feet, it's going to be a lot easier for you to then attach everything else to it. Especially if you capture that curve all the way from the, the head to the toe quite accurately. Another thing is that the reason it's important is because getting down to the toes really quickly helps you figure out the connections because you're literally trying to find the next connection downward. It's not going to work for every pose. Some poses just are very bunched up and things are going left and right and everything is just kind of crisscrossing. But in a standing pose like this, it's quite common to be able to do that fairly quickly. Okay, so moving on to the other one, I'm placing the bottom of the foot before I put anything back there. So then from the hip to the knee and then down to where I place that little foot indication. So proportions, proportions really matter. And so find the beginning, find the end, and then connecting them with these big sweeping lines just is so much easier when you know where they go. And then noticing right in here, I'm adding a little bit mass for the, the butt. I didn't start with that. I started with the connection from the back all the way to the knee and how it flows. And then I can add that little mass because I think it is quite important. If it was, if it was missing that, it feels a little bit worse than if he was missing like a bicep muscle. Uh, for this arm, it's very straight. And so I started that bottom line with just a straight and making that kind of inactive. And then the top, look at the activity. I exaggerated it so much from his shoulder sweeping down to the tricep and then back up to the forearm and then straight across to the fist again. And that back and forth really active at the top and really straight at the bottom makes that shape of the arm really exciting to me. I, I feel like that is more exciting than if I was more true to the like all the little bumps of the anatomy. Um, and then the back arm is more of a C curve at the top and then much more active at the bottom. And then the, with the hands, I kind of just tried to keep them boxy. You know, no finger indications, just the overall big shape of the fist. And uh, sometimes like I like to add that little eye socket shape. It's like a little diamond. I don't think I showed you guys that, but yeah, sometimes if I'm not really seeing a sweep from one eye to the other, I'll just draw the shape of the big eye that I see there. And that works just as well to show like, okay, where's the face pointing? It's similar to the indication that I showed you for the bottom of the nose. This is like an indication for the inside of the eye socket. So just a little bit of context there that, that matters. <laughs> you see I'm using a straight edge for the, for the stick. Okay, this one is done. Okay, with this one, I'm not starting with the head. <laughs> I'm gonna change it up. So that back arm is very straight-ish, got a subtle curve to it. And then the front arm has that sweeping like S curve to it. It's a, you know, a longer curve on the forearm and then up and over the deltoid and much more active. And that combination just looks really nice to me, right? And the reason I'm not starting with the head is because I feel like that connection from those arms to the torso is more important. And I just felt like jumping right into that. I felt like trying to get the head in there might distract me from that most important rhythm from the arms to the torso. And so I just jumped in and that's totally fine. Uh, you don't always have to follow that pattern of, you know, head, neck, shoulders, torso, legs, arms. You can go with whatever you feel like is most important or what you feel like you're more comfortable, more confident in approaching first, because whatever you start with, if you get it correct or close, it's going to kind of guide the rest of the drawing. If you mess it up, you're not going to be looking forward to the rest of the drawing. So from here, from the shoulders, I kind of use those rhythms pretty true to what you know, the Riley rhythms are from the shoulders down to the center of the, the, the pubic bone. And then from there, going outward to the hips and that leads us back into the legs. And so you're seeing a very big zigzag. This whole pose is a big zigzag. And so I'm definitely trying to capture all of that while also looking for areas where it's not a sudden turn, but kind of softening the turns. Like her left hip is a soft curve from the torso over into the leg. 
Whereas on the other side, it's a much more sharp turn. And this leg in here, uh, pretty straightforward. You know, the, the, the curves are very close to what I showed you guys in the template. And that foot is facing right towards us. And so uh, just kind of, just a triangle. It's a big triangle and I couldn't help myself but to do a little big toe indication there. And then exaggerating some of those curves in the calf muscles. But this other foot, you can see how, see, I didn't even put the calf muscle in. I'm trying to work out the two ends of that and then put the calf muscle to connect them. But I ignored the heel and I was trying to find that curve from the ankle to the toe, add the, sh the heel back in there, and voila, the foot just looks real nice. Occasionally, you'll see me coming in and adding some more little indications just to make sure that all my angles are correct. Like I was checking here to make sure that the hip to hip relationship was correct because sometimes I'll be putting the rhythms down, but I, maybe we'll forget to make sure that the, the two sides of the hip are working together. And so sometimes I'll just go back and double check and if it looks good, I'll continue. Jumping back to the arm, so you see how I'm not finishing every part like as if they were templates. I'm really just trying to find connections. It was more important for me at the beginning to connect these arms to the torso than to try to get a finished arm in there. And then now finally getting the head, which you see once the, this is, you know, the body's in there, the head is really easy. It's just a little oval and then make sure it looks up and then there's a little bottom of the nose, an ear, and yeah, I mean, already we know exactly what's going on here. Now, when the, when the hair helps to show movement, like in this pose where we were capturing that hair moving with the pose, it is really nice to try to find the motion of the hair because it's going to help give us even more context to what's going on. And then look at that curve from the hand to the wrist. That is really nice the way it flows in there. And then much more straight in the back one. I'm not trying to make it compete with the front one. Contrasting, really curvy and very simple and straight. Okay, and then for, uh, for the breasts, there's usually this upside down heart shape. I don't remember if I told you guys about this in the, in the previous episode, but really it's just, it's an upside down heart. That's really it. Um, the bottom line there that you saw that I did a curve around the rib cage, that sometimes will kind of curve upward, sometimes it'll curve downward. And it depends on whether the person is kind of, the, the torso is leaning back or forward. And uh, you'll understand once we get into perspective why that is, but it doesn't really matter. As long as you get an upside down heart and you just kind of connect the, the breasts all the way up to the pit of the neck, that's where that point of the heart ends then it'll be fine. And you see here again, I'm going back in and trying to look for a few little muscle shapes that help with the gesture. And maybe sometimes in areas where I push the gesture maybe a little bit too far and I feel like the bones feel a little broken, I might add a little bit of the opposite side to, to clarify that, yeah, there is a muscle there. And here I'm just... Getting a little carried away. Uh, I could have probably ended it here. The, I've captured the gesture, but I think I had a little bit more time left and I was just adding some details. This is more like level two stuff. Don't, do not expect you to, to be adding some of this anatomical information. Okay, another one where I'm starting with the head. I think the head placement here is important enough and it's Basically an oval, a little bit of a hair. And, and by the way, if there is a lot of volume to the hair, I do find it really helpful to add that volume in because it helps me then to judge the proportions of the torso in relationship to the head. Because if I don't put that little mass of the hair at the top, it will make the shape of the head feel smaller on my page than when I look at the photo and that can throw me off. 
Um, but anyway, so here, look at how I'm really pushing these curves forward for the rib cage and from that from the back of the rib cage there and that front uh over the belly it there these two lines are kind of one goes to the other if that, if that makes any sense and then big pinch in the hip and then that gesture from the back to the front of the belly is going to continue down to the legs and it would have been actually probably a better idea if I had continued that right away instead of going and adding these details for the arm. But, you know, I don't follow the same pattern every time I do these. I let my intuition guide me of what I want to jump to next. And sometimes I'll do kind of the thing that I say is better to do. And sometimes I'll just jump in and add some more detail to an area. And both work. And, you know, it, it's kind of, that's why every pose is unique. And maybe even if I attempted this pose again, I would have done it in a different order. And that's totally fine. You, you can experiment and you just let your intuition guide you. And here I did a center line and then to the belly button. I don't think I mentioned the belly button to you guys before, but that is also a really nice landmark, kind of a context landmark to, for quick sketch. It's kind of like the nose and the ear. It's really easy to add the belly button and make it clear to the viewer of, oh, that's the middle of the torso. Like just one little dot right there and we could tell. And uh, for the legs, look at how much I pushed that back leg. Um, and I don't think I'm even exaggerating it that much. I think it's pretty close to what I, what I drew. Um, and then that front leg, really nice subtle curve, subtle S-curve over the knee, down to the toe, and then coming in and kind of filling in that gap from one to the other. But still, from the ankles to the toes, real nice flow from that bony thin area to the toe, the thick area in the toes. Another thing about this front leg is notice how that left side is really subtle and straight and the right side is super active. I, I like that combination. Okay, moving on to another pose from the same model. She's looking up a little bit, so I'll make sure that that guitar pick shape has the chin pointing up. And then again, I'm gonna show you this little diamond shape for the eye socket, and a little flick of the pencil for the bottom of the nose. And that's it for the face. Skin stretching for the bottom of the neck there, and then the shoulders quite close to it. Um, and then again, the little bun and the hair, pretty important to get all the volume there to compare. And just looking for that sweep of the arm and then going right into the center line. I, I feel like the center line is quite important in this one because it captures some of the motion of the torso there, but it also sh captures that this is actually a very vertical pose. There's not much tilting going on. And so that center line shows some of that. Um, and then the angle of the rib cage over the belly and into the hip. Now notice how I'm not drawing all of the, the folds. Like look at the left side of the rib cage there. We're seeing three folds of the skin. I simplify that to one curve. It's really tempting to just draw all the detail that you're seeing, but that's not, <laughs> that's not the pose. That's extra detail on top where we have to be able to look past all the details and really look for the connections between all these things, the flow. What is it that's going to show the pose? You know, you might think, well, that for the body type, we got to show that stuff. Well, not really. Like, you'll see that if I get the proportions right, it looks like the same body type. And just occasionally, like I added one of those uh, creases in the middle of the torso there for the, where the rib cage and the the hip are kind of pinching together. And so I chose one that I felt like was really important to help show the pose. And then the other ones I'm just ignoring, just like I ignore the biceps, I ignore hamstrings. I, there, there's a lot of bumps and lumps everywhere that I'll ignore no matter what the body type. Then the leg flowing. Again, look at, I ignored that whole back of the upper leg. There's an outward curve, but that's going against the overall flow of the leg and I 
don't want to do that yet. I want to find that S-curve flow all the way to the toes. But this one, I for some reason, I went all the way just to the heel. And then right here, I added that curve to the toe. I don't always do that, but um, for some reason, in this one I did. I'm just actually just trying to show more perspective, more structure on that foot. Maybe it's because I wanted to add to show how all of the weight, like probably like 95% of the weight is on that heel. And so I instinctively just went for like structure instead of that flow from shin to toe. Um, yeah, that's probably what it was. Uh, but on this one, I went all the way from the calf to the toe and then add this little heel bump. And there you go, there's a foot. You'll see sometimes I add that little armpit indication. I like to connect it. It helps me connect the arm to the torso, even though it's that tiny, it's a very small indication. I'll do that in the front as well, and that leads into the pec pectoral muscles. Yeah, okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so we finally have a non-standing pose. Uh, so the legs are going to look very different, and, and actually everything is very compressed. She's kind of squeezing everything towards the middle of the pose. And so we, uh, some of our templates are kind of go out the window, and we're just going to have to observe and figure out what are we seeing? What are the rhythms? And uh, in cases like this, it's probably best for you to just watch what I do instead of me trying to explain what I was thinking because, God, every case is so different. And so you might just, you got to just try to figure out and see what I see. Look at what I did and see, do you see that as well in the pose? And, you know, after numerous times of seeing me do these things, it'll, it'll, things just start to click. Um, but so far, you know, everything is pretty straightforward. I'm going more for like that envelope idea. We see how I'm kind of going around the outer edges. I want to capture that overall big shape of the pose and then go inside and start breaking it up. So it's that concept of big to small that we learned about earlier. Um, and I think I tend to go in, use that strategy when poses are compressed like this because the shape is a lot more contained, right? It's much easier to look at that big picture, squint at it, and just see what that overall shape is. But when somebody's standing, you kind of have like the arm, the leg, you know, the, the hands, everything's kind of splayed out from the torso and it's a much more complicated overall envelope shape. And so it's not really good to start with that. But with this one, it was really good to start with an envelope because it's such a simple envelope. And then yeah, so I'm breaking it up. The arm, notice how I didn't put a corner in the elbow. I didn't add any structure anywhere. I just did an S curve all the way down to the fingers. And that's just because that's what I was seeing. I don't see a very clear elbow there. I like how that actually makes it feel more in motion. And so I tried to capture that. And then right there. So for the legs, I was just trying to capture the the, the big connections of the big shapes, ignoring the bumps and breaking it up into small shapes. And there you go. All right, another one. And in this one, she is looking away, kind of her head is tilting away from us and we're seeing the bottom of the jaw. And so I felt like it was very important to show that little triangle from the chin to the both sides of the jaw and then attach the neck to that. So you could see how with that very quick indication and then that tiny eye and ear, like it's pretty clear which direction she's looking. And then over the shoulders, uh, from one shoulder to the other, see I'm finding that, that uh, angle and then right down to the, to the ground. It's the hand in this case is kind of like a leg in other poses where I'm trying to go from the head all the way down to the ground and so it's creating that shape um, so, or it's, it's establishing that big shape from top to bottom. And but also notice how the shape of the arm so far is I put in is really simple. I literally was just looking for the angle to be accurate and finding that bottom of where the hand touches the ground. So it was more of a proportional thing for me. 
is a just a proportional little placeholder and then I can come back in and put more details of the arm if I want. But it helped me then place the subtle curves of, of the torso and down to the knee um, because I know where the ground is. Because when I was doing this, I did feel kind of like, ah, oh, geez, it's hard to figure out exactly where everything's going. Um, but having that hand there definitely helped. And I think I kind of overcomplicated that uh, outer side on the right where I'm showing probably a little too much anatomy for you guys at the moment. Um, I could have done a very simple C curve from the armpit over the hip and into the, to the, into the knee, but I was looking at a little, some more subtle stuff there. But. And then this foot adding structure, but look at that, ignoring the heel and then adding it back in. Okay, now with the fingers, I do want to show that, you know, they're touching the ground and they're splaying out. Some indications of gravity. So the, the heart shape that I told you guys is still there. Different shapes, you know, they... Based on the pose, that hard shape will move around and shift and all sorts of stuff, but it's still a general basic heart. And so I always start with that and see, okay, what, how, what is that heart doing? Sometimes you'll see me coming in and just like darkening, darkening a few lines that I feel like are important to emphasize. And so that's, that's more of a line quality thing. So we were already past that. So that's just like, okay, where do I want to put, you know, more importance, right? Like right there, that bottom of the belly to separate that from the leg, show the pinch. I felt like that was very important. It's not a lighting thing. That wasn't a depth thing. That was an importance. Um, well, I guess a little bit of depth. I'm trying to push that belly forward away from the legs. line quality that really matters like you could see how in all of these quick sketches I do care about my lines and um, the variety in my lines does actually help my my sketches look nice sometimes I'm using the side of the pencil for soft thick you know strokes and sometimes the tip to uh, get really thin crisp lines all right, so this next pose is pretty straightforward. I think it's more of the same of, you know, everything that I've been talking about. So I wanted to actually use this moment to talk about confidence because personally I've felt like confidence is an extremely important part of drawing, especially quick sketch when you have a you know limited amount of time. Um, but really sketch, any kind of sketching, confident lines, confident shapes, just your overall approach shows through or your overall mindset shows through in your drawings. And so I feel like it's really important to approach every, all your drawings with confidence, which is really difficult to do when most of your lines are wrong, right? And, and when you're starting out drawing, when you're a beginner, yeah, most of your lines are going to be wrong. That's just the, the way it is. Um, like as you get better, they'll get more and more right. But how do you have confidence when most of your lines are wrong? And, you know, I have been there, you know, when I was starting out doing this stuff, most of my lines were wrong. And the thing that I found that helped me back then was to just pretend that I was good. I would think, you know, what's the worst that could happen? You know what, I mess up again, you know, so what? So what if I mess it up? I'll just move on to the next sketch. And so by letting go of the idea that your drawing has to be good, you kind of stop being afraid. Because the reason we're not confident is because we're just scared of putting the next line down. Like, oh my God, what if it's wrong? And so when you let go of that and you say, well, it doesn't matter if it's wrong. 
So I would pretend that I was good and I would approach it with confidence. And what would happen is that, you know, maybe the line was still in the wrong spot, but at least the line looked good or better than if I wasn't confident. And a lot of times it would surprise me that, oh, hey, that line looks kind of good. And then it would give me real confidence. And then the real confidence would end up making me make better decisions and put things in the right spot or, you know, at least closer to the right spot. And so that initial approach of confidence would snowball into real confidence and that would result in better drawings. And I feel like that approach and that mindset made me improve a little bit faster if, than if I wasn't doing it that way. And if I was timid and afraid of everything that I put down. And so I just wanted you guys to try to do that. If you find that you're scared, if you find that you don't have confidence and your lines are looking timid, just try to figure it out. Try to figure out how you can get into a more confident mindset. It might be different for you than it was for me, the way to get there. Um, Cause you know, we're all different, but just try to get to that. I, I unfortunately don't know who you are. And so I don't know how to give you specific advice for that, but just from personal experience, that confidence was extremely important for me. Okay, I also want to talk a little bit about 3D forms and how rhythms apply to that. Um, I'm not going to get too detailed in that, but I just want to touch on it a little bit. So this template of rhythms that I showed you is very two-dimensional. It is shape-based, right? Because we're on the shape section of the course. It's not form-based. Okay? We're not thinking of three-dimensional forms, although <laughs> you did see how I did occasionally jump to 3D structure and uh, I just couldn't help myself. Um, and that is to say that rhythms can also be used to show three-dimensional forms. Even though the template that I showed you guys is very two-dimensional, rhythms are not limited to two-dimensional shapes. They can absolutely be used to show structure and perspective. We can look for rhythms along the major plane changes. What I mean by that is like the front of the rib cage and the side of the rib cage. There's like a little corner in between. Like if you imagine a box for the rib cage, you can draw a rhythm along that plane change and that'll indicate 3D structure. So we can consider the structure, the perspective along with the gesture and we're going to be doing that more in the next section. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm actually really excited. I'm always excited to move on to the next section of the course because it's like, it's a really, it's another big important thing that I can show you guys. Um, it's going to be really fun, I think, because once you combine this, all this gestural stuff that we're learning to structure, oh my God, that's where all the power really comes in. And so later on in this course, I'm going to show you a more three-dimensional blueprint for drawing any pose. Uh, kind of like a little mannequin, but my own mannequin that I think works better and not something that has to be, you know, made out of wood. Uh, if, you, if you guys know what I'm talking about, the little wooden figures that you can buy at any art store. You know, you, you can have a similar kind of blueprint like I showed you with the rhythms, but made of simple three-dimensional forms. And so then you can combine the rhythms that you learned along with these this kind of three-dimensional blueprint template thing for uh, the body. And you can then draw any pose that is dynamic and three-dimensional. And also that template can be manipulated. Those forms can be kind of stretched and bloated and bent or whatever to change the body type. Just like how we talked about how you can create different character types by changing the proportions of shapes, you can do the same thing with bodies where you change the forms, the three-dimensional forms to create different st structured body types. So anyway, I'm getting a little carry away here. I'm excited for the next section. Yeah, that's coming up. <laughs> so coming back to rhythms, um, to kind of conclude this a little bit, I hope that you see 
the value of rhythms and how widely they can be applied, we start usually practicing them mostly from observation, from photos, looking at poses and studying and trying to break them down into, into rhythms. But eventually, after drawing rhythms for a while, it makes it much easier to also draw people from imagination because it systematizes our choices of lines to use. And so, once you've drawn enough people, you kind of have a little template for every body part uh, I showed you guys. And yeah, you, you, even when you're drawing a pose that is a little bit different, you kind of have drawn something similar to it. And so, you, you call back on those other poses and you can find a rhythm to represent that quickly. And so, getting good at rhythms is useful, I think, no matter what field you're thinking of going into whether it's character design or animation or illustration or fine art. You know, there's a lot of artists around the world doing very different things, but they use either rhythms or as kind of a, like a modified version of rhythms or something. It's just, it's such a broad concept that I think it's worthwhile for you guys to make it a regular part of your practice sessions is doing these quick sketch, you know, one to two hour practice sessions. Personally, I find them extremely fun. Uh, I like drawing people. If you don't, then yeah, it's going to be hard for you to, to you know, find the time to do that. Um, but if you do enjoy it, make it a regular thing. Do it once a week, maybe more, whatever you have time for. You know, we're all, we all have different uh, amounts of time that we have available to dedicate to this stuff. But I do think that this is one, one of the most important things to make a regular routine. If you do have life drawing sessions around and you're not 10 years old, <laughs> you could uh, go and, and try to join one of those and, and draw from life instead of from photos. It, it is a little bit of a difference, um, but it doesn't, it's not like it's going to make you or break you. you. If you don't have any life drawing sessions around, then continuing to draw from these photos is totally fine. You just yeah, you, know, you just got to change it up. You're going to have to go probably find more reference, uh, which by the way, we do have a lot of reference available. You go to the browse section of our website, you, there's uh, all these tools, we call them, and they're, they're photo packs, and there's dozens and maybe even eventually there'll be hundreds of different packs to choose from. And yeah, just get some and uh, just start drawing. Anyway, I'll leave you... At this point, you can continue watching the rest of these poses and I'll see you in the next video where I'll show level two.